Hello everybody and welcome to part 13 of our Python 3 basics tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is some of the basics to debugging. Most of the time your errors are going to be the result of a typo followed uh, yeah, kind of closely by a misunderstanding of indentation and standards possibly or maybe you're missing a module you import you know you downloaded the wrong bit version or Python version or something like that but probably like 80 at least percent of the time it's going to be a typo a couple of things that you can think about while you're programming like we've shown before uh, when you do like an if statement or a for loop or a function um, the Python IDEs automatically will indent for you so anytime you're programming and suddenly you have a random indentation or you're lacking an indent that you, where you thought you should have an indent you should automatically understand that something is probably wrong um, I've never had a random indent show up or an indent not be there and there not be something wrong syntactically with uh, my program so that's usually a very quick red flag uh, otherwise a lot of times it's just a typo in the naming of a variable or a function or a function parameter for that matter so uh, with that the first error we're going to discuss is the sort of name error so obviously a lot of people you know this is obvious right but you'd be surprised how easily you can overlook um, overlook maybe a misspelling I don't know if you I forget what college did it I, I don't know but there's a you know this this whole paragraph basically of text where um, the first and last letter are correct but the, the letters in between the first and last letter are all jumbled up and most people have no problem reading it at a regular pace or a speaking pace like they can read off of it and say it, you know speak it out loud even though all of the words are misspelled and I think that really drives the point home how easily you can overlook a misspelling um, that is going to throw an error in Python um, but you might not be able to see it uh, very easily so a great example of that would be a word like, I don't know, variable. And we can say variable equals 55. Okay. Then we go to print that variable and we go variable like that. Now, again, we're looking for it. Uh, so you probably like, oh, I see it immediately. But uh, you'd be surprised how quickly and how often you're going to miss it. So this throws a name error and it says variable is not defined. Now, immediately when you get the error, you should read the name and, and decide right then and there if that's the undefined part. So if it says that is not defined and this is typoed, then you know that the typo is when you've called the variable. But if instead you typoed maybe here and you spelled this right, variable, and you run it, and instead your error says name variable is not defined, you're like, well, that's spelled correctly. You should immediately bring your eyes to the definition of that variable because the chances are you misspelled there. Now, again, I realize that to many of you this seems absolutely obvious, um, but it's extremely common to happen. Uh, so I'll comment that as name error, and we'll comment and comment and we'll continue on. Now the next one is just an indentation error. Um, a quick and easy way for me to show this would be define func one. Say you're, I don't know, you're just being crazy and you decide, well actually I want to define a different function first or something and you begin to do things uh, like that. When you go to run this, the problem is uh, you'll get this error. Expected an indented block because we define something, we use this, but we never actually put any code under it. Okay, so if you hit enter, you have this indentation, and the only way that you could define function two, it would be to hit your delete key and move back a space, right? And then create your new function. So immediately your tabs or your indentation um, should um, throw a red flag for you. So we'll say expected and indent and I'll comment these out. Next, uh, well that was an expected an indent, so it ex you know, Python was expecting us to have an indented bit of code, but we did not do it. Um, and just for the record, you can have embedded you know, parent and child functions, so 
you could do something like this, even though we've commented out, for example, I'll just show this real quick. This is totally legitimate. You could have a main function that has uh, child functions. That's totally fine. So this would be a circumstance where you might accidentally not have proper indentations. Um, so that was the original. Now we have expected indent, uh, or uh, rather unexpected indent. And this is another syntax error. So this was a name error. So this is an error that is going to come up in your script. So if you guys recall, at the very beginning, I said Python is a scripting language, and it's read line by line. So when you go to run your code, this error, a name error, is going to run um, in the code. So for example, um, you know, starting here, if we run this, it says starting here, so it runs some of the code, and then we come up against the name error. Now, this runs no problem, but uh, let me move this down here. So a name error is what's known as an exception, okay? Whereas we come down here to this expected an indent, and let's uncomment this stuff out. This error here is a syntax error, hence why we got that, that little bubble, right? So when we go to run this, we get expected an indented block. The code does not even run. So in fact, let me just, this is our old uh, here. I'll hit OK. Let's run this one more time. OK. So all that happens is nothing, and we get that error here, this expected and indented block. So none of the code ran, even though we have some code up here. So a syntax error will not stop, um, or I mean will stop your program from running entirely. Whereas a, an exception error is going to let the code run all the way up to that exception point. Anyway, so I'm going to uh, uh, comment these out now <clears throat> and turn back. Now we have an unexpected indentation. Let's say we define task um, and task is print uh, one, and then we do uh, print two, and then we do print. Three. What Python is going to read is this. It's going to say, "Okay, cool, no problem." And then it's going to be like, "Whoa, okay, so we we're, we've finished the function because at this point we've notified Python because Python has this kind of automatic um, standards. So at this point we've notified Python we're done with the function because we've shifted over the block. And then here all of a sudden we have an unexpected indent. So when we run it, we do get unexpected indent and it brings us to here because that was where the unexpected indent actually occurred. Next up, um, let me bring this up here and um, in fact I think what I'm going to do is for the code here, let me do one, two, three, one, two, three, multi-line comment them out instead of uh, that so it's easier to read. Three and then unexpected indent. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now uh, I'm going to be talking about EOL while scanning string literal. So that makes no sense to some people. So let's go ahead and talk about that one. So let's say we have print, and in our print, we are going to do the following. Let's say we have, um, hey there, how are you today? Something like this. Uh, when we go to run this, again, this is a syntax error, and it says EOL while scanning string literal. And what we've done is we've never actually closed off uh, our print function, right? But the actual main problem is that we never actually closed off the string. Okay, so let's say we close off the string, but we forget to close off that, right? So let's go ahead and run that real quick, and we get unexpected EOF while parsing. Now that goes all the way down here because this is all the white space because I've hit my enter key a bunch, but we could do this. Uh, bring up that white space. Um, try again. And we hit OK and it brings us here. Okay, So that is because we didn't actually close off the print statement. Now again, this one will happen and because we've started with this little tuple here, um, as you hit enter, 
and maybe you want to make some more print or you want to continue on with your program and you're like why is it automatically indented over well again remember that when you get that little automatic indent that should be a, a red flag to you that something is wrong so you should look here and be like oh I forgot my I forgot my closing um, bracket there or parentheses so uh, that's your EOL and EOF um, another popular one, like like let's say you make a list, you know x equals, um, and then one blah, 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 like that. You go to run it again. Unexpected EOF while parsing, basically end of. Um, I forget what F stands for, but anyway, um, there is no end right to this list. We've never closed it off. And again, though, if you hit enter, you're going to be automatically indented. You're going to be like, what is happening? And you're going to hit your backspace, and then maybe you'll continue coding. But you're going to find that you have a problem because you still never close this off. Now, that's going to conclude uh, some basic debugging. As you can see, like I said, most of this is just typos. Um, but you're, you're going to have these errors, and the quicker that you learn what these errors mean, obviously, you know, name error, something is not defined. You should be able to read that and understand what it means. Expected an indent, an unexpected indent, logical sense. But the EOF and EOL and all that kind of stuff, obviously, sometimes people are like, what, what does that even mean, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so that's what they mean. Now, um, <clears throat> there are other errors, too, that you're going to see. Uh, sometimes you're going to have modules that don't exist, and but again, that just means you don't have the module. And sometimes if you've downloaded that module, um, you maybe you downloaded the wrong bit version. So, for example, on Python, you can see what bit version of Python you have, and even the Python version, by just going into idle, and you see I'm running Python 3.4.1, and you get the bit version, it's 64 bit, so AMD 64. Um, so any modules I download must be 64 bit, otherwise, they're not going to work uh, with Python. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're on a 64 bit machine, you can always download 32 bit Python. That's actually the default that will be downloaded. If you're on a 32 bit machine, I'm sorry, but you can't use 64 bit. Um, programs. So uh, just keep that in mind whenever you download modules that you have to get the right bit version and all of that. Um, but anyway, that's going to conclude the debugging tutorial video. In the next video, we're going to be covering um, working with files. So in the next few videos, really, we're going to be discussing writing to a file, appending to a file, and reading from a file. So stay tuned for those. As always, thank you for watching.